Sometime years ago, I don't recall exactly when, I was sitting in the near-empty gate at some airport, leafing absent-mindedly through a book and waiting for an early morning flight back to Montana, when somebody sat down in the row of chairs just across the aisle. After a few minutes, I felt like I was being watched. I glanced up. She was a flight attendant, youngish and blonde, and with an inquiring look on her face. She smiled at me. You dig dinosaurs, huh? I was surprised, but I nodded. <laughs> How did you know? The t-shirt was a clue, but it was the backpack that gave it away. She motioned with the toe of her pump at my tattered old rucksack, sitting there with its weather-beaten, patched-up canvas, radiating a faint cloud of Cretaceous dust like it always does. She chuckled a little bit. And she crossed her arms. So, what's it like? That's a question that I get a lot. My name is Danny Anduza, and I'm a paleontologist. I've been lucky enough to be able to pursue my greatest passion, and that plays out on a daily basis. Whether it's research, or field work or illustrations, and one way or another, most of my waking hours are organized around the study of fossils. Now, when that's how your life is structured, it can be really easy to just become completely engrossed in your work and to, to not really share it with people outside of your discipline. That's a big mistake. As scientists, people like me who actually make our living unlocking the mysteries of the universe, we have literally the most interesting jobs in the entire world. It's about time we started acting like it, I think. The biggest part of that is reaching out to the public. It means stepping out of the lab and actually talking to people, answering questions and promoting our own research and not leaving that up to the journalists and the science communicators because, oh, let's face it, they often aren't up to the task. Recently, some research was published that said the Triceratops was not real. I think it's high time that scientists took ownership of how their science is represented. Now, first off, having useful vocabulary can help with this. Many occupations actually have their own specific verbs, which help to frame their work in active, forceful ways to keep it from becoming an abstraction. But most scientific fields don't have their own verbs. Fossil science doesn't. And sometimes I worry that this failure of vocabulary might make paleontology seem dry and distant. <laughs> funny. What's funny? Well, a girl like you, a paleontologist. What's wrong with paleontology? Classifying old bones. Old oh, bones? I wanted to do something about that. I wanted a word. So like any moderately creative person, I decided to come up with my own. I like to call it paleontologizing. It's kind of a joke, kind of an overtly jargony sounding word, but it also speaks to what I really do in a broad kind of way. It speaks to the idea that paleontology isn't just a body of knowledge, like a book lying there on a shelf. No, it's a process, it's something that you do. It's a way to think. Put simply, paleontologizing is looking at the world around us in a way that's informed by the study of fossils. This can manifest in a lot of different ways, like realizing that the pronghorn, also called the antelope, happens to be the fastest runner in the Western Hemisphere. And there's a very good reason for that. It's because until one of its predators went extinct fairly recently, it had to be that fast, just for everyday survival. Paleontologizing is being momentarily dumbstruck when confronted with the sheer size of a full-grown elephant, before remembering that, oh, relatively speaking, <laughs> it's not actually that big. Paleontologizing is appreciating that for every tree, every mushroom, every fly, 
there are over three billion years of evolution that went into shaping them. Paleontologizing is knowing that if you really want to understand the world and our place in it, then you have to understand the past. And, you know, not to be sappy or anything, but the act of digging into that past, <laughs> that's the greatest adventure there is. In today's world, when the fact that animals change through time is accepted by fewer than half of Americans, when primetime television is full of pseudoscience bullshit, and a culture that sometimes seems to have abandoned the very idea of truth. Alternative facts. We need more scientists reaching out to the public. This video series is my attempt at that. In these videos, you'll see scientific discussions, interviews with other scientists, reports from the field, original illustrations, tips and pointers for those of you who want to get into paleontology, explorations of the give and take between paleo and pop culture, and above all, a celebration of that fossil heritage that we all share. So whether you're the distinguished curator of a major museum, or just a curious member of the public, I'm glad you're here, and I hope you'll get something valuable out of this. My name is Danny Anduza, and this is Paleontologizing.